Hello, welcome to Hating TV Workshop Wednesday. Alex was supposed to do his intro, but he sort of didn't do it and totally forgot to do it. And also forgot to say like and subscribe, that'd be most appreciated. And let us all know here in the comments below what you think of Alex's video. Hello guys, I'll show you the old bus. I'm doing a clutch master cylinder on the John Deere 3040. I can't quite turn my camera around to kind of show you what I'm doing because my camera is not uh, very functioning very well. So what I'm doing is changing this old master cylinder. Um, what it's doing is gone past the seals inside the piston and it's creating, well, suction air. And the best thing for these master cylinders, get your snake cylinder underneath there, that one there. Reverse bleeding is always the best kind of way. Okay, you can go the old conventional way when you push your clutch down, push all the air out, release the nip, uh, close the nipple up, so it's sucked back in air, push again to release the nipple. Kind of that sequence, yeah? But this is all gonna be reverse bled. So I'll just give you a little show of basically the old conventional clutches which you get on the John Deere's. You used to get them with Fords, everything, which didn't have a fluid clutch. Um, this clutch mass cinder goes every like two, two years for some reason. I don't know why, I bought a genuine one. Thanks John Deere for absolutely costing a fortune on a new one, but the genuine is best. They say, all I wanna do is just get back edge trimming and it'll be under our way. Right, the master cylinder is off. As you can see, I always make a mess. Anything related to fluids, I always seem to make a mess. I don't know why, maybe I could just drain it beforehand, but I ain't got time for that. It's off and quite, you know, they are quite conventional. You see them on everything from Fords to Fiat's, obviously John Deere's, very conventional, even in your normal vehicles. As the oil comes down from the reservoir, inside there is a top block reservoir, and it goes to this little chamber, and in this chamber is two little holes. So when that piston is getting pulled through, it drags the oil down through so that no air is going to happen inside the cylinder. When that oil is getting pushed out on the banjo bolt side here, so a banjo bolt goes in there, goes all the way down to here, into the slave cylinder. So that will push that rod that pushes a thrust bearing on the crank arm here that's inside the bell housing and that pushes a thrust bearing on the only on the 40 series john deere's these has it on the 50 series they don't they have an internal thrust bearing which is also the slave cylinder so that will be in here somewhere which on my 2850 which needs to be done as well yeah it's quite a compact little master cylinder i say the two holes it it can never really create air but the only problem that you get if you bugger these up is that this bolt here obviously determines your depth of how you push your clutch down. So in the books, they always tell you how far to push the clutch down. Because if you push that piston down too far, the two little holes here, they have a... Well, the seal gets scratched by the two holes, let's say. Then it can actually go past it. Then you'll see oil popping out the actual piston side. So it actually comes out and ends up inside the rubber there. So I'll take that off in a second. Put that one on the new one. And then we'll start fitting it back up again and start bleeding it. Well, that didn't work. I think I did a little bit too tight with the spanner. So I'm to have to get my lazy ass up the field now. And do that. Let's go up there though. Another thing as well, you know, not to anybody who suck eggs when it comes to like fitting bits and bobs. You know, a lot of the farmers fit their own gear, but when it comes to clutches, it's always fine, fine tuning, let's say. So there you have your rod that pushes in your piston. Make sure you always have a bit of free play. So make sure this. It's kind of loose, like that rod is literally just off of the piston because you don't want to wind that in, like not wind it in too far because if you if it's not wound in too far, there's still gonna be pressure against the rod inside. So the pedal should always have a little bit of free play. So you know that piston is coming extruding right back when it's drawing back the fluid. So that's what you want. This was the old one. So as I said early on, this is the, um, the chamber where the kind of oil 
kind of sits basically when it comes from the pipe there that comes from the top reservoir. God, I feel knackered walking up there. Anyway, <coughs> so say when the rod goes in there, pushes a the piston down, you actually see the piston moving. And so the piston ends literally near the top here. And you've got like another internal chamber on the piston. So when that pushes forward, when that obviously goes forward, it drags the oil in that tapered hole there and obviously pushes out its way to the slave cylinder. Whilst that's being pushed, the other oil is being dragged through as well from the reservoir to keep a cycle. So there's no air pockets happening in the master cylinder. So it's always continuously going up and through. But the minute you set that pedal too far, the seal at the very end of the piston scratches that one there and then you rack the seal and then it's sucking air in so i was getting a bit of a soft pedal because i do i run a modern baler behind a 40 year old tractor a round baler you honestly can't really go too wrong with these old girls and that is the hay team's weight which they're never getting back so it is done pretty well it's in good shape it's showing wear and tear but she's got around the clock twice and it's kind of man and boy this tractor so Oh, I actually enjoy driving it. She sounds a beast. Anyway, I'll um, crack on and start putting this one back together and then get them bled. Done, old sit up. You can see the top place she has reverse bleeding kits. The air forces in there and forces it up into the pipe. So it forces in the bottle and it will push all the air out once it goes into there. Make sure you kind of lock them off after it's done. I've connected it on the Land Rover tyre only because the wet, the air. The tractor tires are all way around. So right, we should be filling up that in a second, which it kind of already has a little bit, a little test. So what I'll do now, we'll watch it rise in a minute. I'll just turn him on. Let's see it rising. So it's doing something. So we'll just release it a bit. Doesn't look like it's doing any, but it is going down on that. That's for sure. So it's pushing out all that air, which we want. Right, that's all fitted, installed. We've actually got a oh, got a pedal, which is nice. Oh, I can't pull that. Problem is the pedal goes around that stop. But anyway, but that's where I reckon where most of the problem is. If it keeps going around there, it pushes the piston uh, past where the seal is against the hole. So this hole kind of scratches the seal. And even one little scratch on a seal, it could just ruin it completely. So I think you get rebuild kits because that was £218. Yep. John Deere special. I'm hoping uh, my supplier is going to drop some percentage on that when I get the invoice come through. But that's all job done. I can get on, put it all, put the dash back together. Hope you like my dash, that is the actual dash, a box, because it actually caught fire underneath here about three years ago when my son was in the tractor with me. And he goes, Dad, there's a fire happening. I was like, what? And you just see all that white smoke bellowing everywhere. So anyway, so I made a dash. Anyway, it works. Oh, and the, the valve guides are gone as well, and the stems as well, but this one keeps going. Just keep pouring more oil into it, it'll keep going. Right. Just regarding yeah, the clutch, what does everybody think of Land Rovers? I thought I'd put it out there because this is my work truck that you're probably seeing Justin and Adam's factory that you see around and any influences out there for Land Rovers. You know, I've got this one rebuilt. It's like Galvy doors, bulkhead lot. It got rebuilt about a year ago, but it's taken four years in the process because I started doing it. I had to give it to a friend of mine, but I built my own bumper, which still haven't finished yet because I need to put the, uh, sort of the base of the front idler rollers on the front there to run the winch, but he's a PTO driven and he's very, very powerful. But this is my... This is my main welding truck because by trade I am a welder by trade. Right, she's moved and in place and the clutch is working lovely but I'm going to weld a washer on the end of that bolt because he is going past it which I think is why it's scratching the seal. But also, what do you think of John Deere's too? As we've seen the Land Rover and Massey's, that's a beauty. Does all the feeding for the cattle, everything. 70 animals, does it all, scraping out. Absolute beaut. We've got about 1,100 kilos of weight. Justin's favourite. Everybody loves the Iconics. Can't beat it, can you? Well, 
other people's favourites have probably beat it, but that one is uh, the family jewel, I reckon. She never misses a beat. But anyway, leave a comment below because I'm sure there's lots of John Deere lovers out there, even the old schools. So I've got a 2850, but the engine blew up, so that's on the uh, that's on the uh, <laughs> another job. Anyway, catch you later. Let's go trimming.